Hello and welcome to the tutorial series of my new tool Easy Clones. Easy Clones is a 2D cloning system for bitmap artwork, shape layers and pre-comps. In this first demo I'm going to be showing you how to build a clone system. So first of all you need to select a layer that you want to build clones of. So I've got this little square here and we're going to come over to Easy Clones and just click the first button which is create a clone system. I'm working with second display here, my pop-ups are coming on a different window, but this will open a dialog box here and it's going to ask you to name your clone system, whether you need any random colors and if you want to center your clone layers to the control layer it will build. So I'm just going to leave this, actually I'm going to call this squares. I'm going to use two colors in the demo and I will center it and I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> so what you'll see here is our square has jumped to the center of the control here and it's built the control obviously so this is called squares clone controls and it has an effect called easy clones and because we asked for two colors it's built us two colors and some color options. I'll be just explaining the delay checkboxes in a more advanced tutorial. Um, so the way this works is the clone control layer um, is used to animate the basic properties of as in the transform properties. So we have position, scale, rotation and opacity. So the clone layers will reference whatever we plot in these keyframes. So if we come in and just build a simple animation, so what I'm going to do is animate from the kind of bottom left corner here up to the top right in a sort of S curve, like so. And what we'll do is we will increase the scale to 150. We will rotate to 45 degrees and we'll drop the opacity to 50. So I'm just going to knock this forward 10 frames and we will just quickly easy ease this so it looks a bit nicer. So now as you'll see when our animation triggers R square follows perfectly with the control layer. So what we can do now is add more clones into the system and it's really simple. All you do is select your clone and just hit command D a couple of times. And then when we play this animation now, you'll see we've got multiple clones following at different rates. And that's because in the on the clone control layer, we have this easy clones effect and you'll see we have a drop down for delay. And by default, this delay is set to two, which means two frames. So if we were to come in and change this, we could set this to 10 and you'll see how this affects the delay, like so. And the way this works is the numbers at the end of the names here are how it corresponds to the delay. So clone one is exactly the same as the keyframes we plot in. Clone two in this instance will be 10 frames delayed. So if I go forward 10 frames and then on frame nine, 11, sorry, you'll see two begins to move. And if we come forward another 10 frames, you'll see this is three. Three is beginning to move. Another 10 frames, four is beginning to move. So basically, this is the same as keyframes, and then this will be delayed by our number that we've put in. And then we'll wait another delay loop, and it will start that one. So if we set this to two again, you'll see they move a lot quicker. So that's the basics of how the delay works and basically easy clones effects allows you to quickly add delays and randomness to the animation that you program in with the basic properties here and the way this works if I toggle down onto the X position here is we have these range range um, controls here so the left limit and the right limit 
and on the scale it will say decrease and increase and I think that's the same for yeah rotation and opacity will say decrease and increase and what this basically does is we can define a range of randomness to be applied to all of our clones so on the left limit zero sorry I'll just quickly explain zero and zero on the left and the right means that zero is wherever our control layer is positioned so on the left limit if I put in minus 400 500 even sorry if I come to when all the clones are stopped what you'll see is this is zero and minus 500 will be over here somewhere and you can see it's pushed our clone layers across because we've built a range of minus 500 to zero for the randomness to apply so then we could add randomness to the right of our control layer by adding in 500 here as well. So now you'll see we've got some clones that have been pushed off of our canvas and some, well, one to the left of it. And that's where these seed controllers come into play. You can cycle through the seeds to find a randomness that you prefer, like this one, for example. So now you'll see we've programmed this basic animation in here but our clones all feel unique because they've got a slightly different position. And that's basically the basics of how this all works. And we've got the same controller set up for the Y position. <coughs> so we could go ahead and add in minus 100 to push our clones up. And we could add in 100 to push them down. So now we've got this range of 200 pixels, 100 above our position here and 100 below it. And again, we can go through the seeds to find one we prefer. And what you'll notice is these seeds are individual. So if we change this number here, it doesn't actually affect our X position in only our Y. So now you'll see we've got this kind of distribution of clone layers all following the same animation we've plotted here, but it feels nice and unique. And I can quickly apply this to the scale. We could go to minus 50 and plus 50, which will give us a, a new range now between 50 on the scale and 150, because we're currently set to 100% here. So if I quickly toggle down these scale properties here, you'll see a bit more clearly. <clears throat> so we've got some of these clones are closer to 50. None of them are actually in a positive number yet. I'm just going to lock this panel here. So if I come here and change the seed, you'll see the numbers down here will begin to change. And now you can see we've got some positive values where we're going into our plus numbers. So we're over our initial scale here. So you can see how the range works when we go through the seed, like so. So we've got even more randomness to our clone system now, like so. Uh, and obviously this works exactly the same for rotation. We could rotate by minus 45 and 45, building a new range and you can see our clone layers are nice and varied at, but follow this same basic animation. And again, with opacity, we could just minus it by a range of 40 and you'll see we get variance in our opacity here, like so. So that's the basics of how the range works to define our randomness. And you will also notice that each of these control layers have a wiggle built in. So what we can do is just quickly add a example here on the wiggle. So we've got a frequency of once per second and 50 pixels. So now if I push these over here slightly, you'll see that we have this independent wiggle on our just our X position currently. And each clone will be given a unique wiggle. So you can control all the wiggles 
in one two controls and each one has an independent wiggle effect based on them. So now we've got more randomness to our animation and then they begin to follow our path and still continue to wiggle. And you can apply wiggles to all of the properties. So if I just quickly chuck a few of these wiggle effects on, you'll see how this affects our overall animation. Let's just go to three seconds. So now we've got all these squares kind of floating around and then they follow our motion path that we've defined here with these eight keyframes. So as you can see, it's, it's quite an easy and effective way to manage multiple layers with very few keyframes. And again, if we want to add more clones, we can just press Command D. And now we've got seven clones and they will all respond with our system that we've programmed in. <clears throat> now at the start, I added two random colors. So as you'll see here, we have these colors. So I could select a color here. If I just go for a nice blue. And as you'll see, we now have a random distribution of colors across our clone layers. And again, there's a seed, so we could just cycle through this until we find one that we prefer, like say number two here. So easy clones introduce random to a cloning system and you can control it all and tailor it all using the controls and the, the seeds. But one of the, the good features with easy clones is you can still animate and control all of your clones independently. So I could have this animation here. Once we get to three seconds, I could decide I want this clone to move and grow in scale. So I could bring it down here and increase it right up like so. And then we can play our animation and you'll see we follow our clone control and then this one grows and becomes big and more important for whatever reason. So it's a very flexible system and it's really fun to use. Um, I'll show you how we can vary up the style of our clones a little bit further. So we could select a few of these clones and we could just come up here and just turn off the fill. So now you can see we've got this variety of clones that are filled and some are just outlines and then they move like so. Finally, the last thing we could do is to, to add some more variety to our clones is this one here, for example, where we've decided to make it change position and grow like giving it more importance within our composition. What we could do is if you actually click on the effect, the clone itself in the effects controls, you'll see we have this effect called clone controls. And here you'll see all these random numbers. And this is basically all the information of the randomness that we've, we've put into our clone via the, the range controls. So that's how it manages all, all of the independent random values. But you also notice we have this random color effect. So what we could do is just turn this off and then you'll see that this clone in particular is now a nice orange color. So within our actual composition, you can see this clone has slightly more significance over all the rest of them. So then when it begins to animate, you'll, you'll see it kind of stands out and it's even more unique. Um, that's it for the basic setup for the cloning system. Be sure to watch the other videos where I'll be showing you more advanced features of easy clones and how to use the tool. Thank you for watching.